Hey everyone, so I'm back again. So this is the fourth Instagram Live for the week. And I am gonna be doing this with my friend, Dr. Keith Bell. He is an acupuncturist, doctor of Chinese medicine. I'm assuming he'll be joining here in a second. Um, we are just, I am still, I'm still in Vegas <laughs> and I'm not going anywhere. Um, Keith, I see you. Hopefully you can request to join and then we will take it from there. Oh, sweet. All right. Look at that. Can this happen? Hi. Hi from Melbourne. <laughs> Hi from Vegas. All right. <laughs> Did I do ah, it? We, we made this work. You know how I am with technology. <laughs> I'm really impressed. <laughs> We're here. We've done this. This is like the hardest part as far as I'm concerned. Now all you have to do is talk. It's easy. It's easy from here on. <laughs> oh, this is not a flattering angle, but there we are. <laughs> if you had told me I had to use my phone, I never would have done this. But here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Sorry, Keith. <laughs> I feel like you look amazing considering the circumstances. <laughs> well, look at you. Same shirt. One, one. Um... Yeah, the, the kale sweater. <laughs> yeah, better is like what I'm in right now. I'm still in my pajama bottoms. It's awesome. I'm like, I'm really winning at life right now. Well, everyone knows that you got stuck in Vegas, right? So you can't go back to New York and you have a little uh, backpack with nothing. It's not quite a backpack, but I do feel like I have nothing. I've been wearing these clothes since February 6th. That's when I left New York. And here Good I am. Good on you. Right? I know. Going on two months. Anyways, it just makes you realize how little you need in life. This is what I'm learning. That's what a lot of people are learning right now. They're learning how to go yeah. back to when they first uh, learned how to be themselves. You know, we were laughing today how I, I'm in my clinic. I can still see we're considered essential here in Virginia. And so I'm only seeing very few patients, the ones that doctors call me and say, we don't want our patients to be put in the hospital. We don't want our patients to be, um, to, to have to go to other bigger practices. And so I've been coming mm -hmm. in and seeing a few people a day and it reminds me of how it was 20 years ago, you know? Yeah. Um, we got busy. We got, we got, um, crazy. And now people are going back to, you know, the core of who they were at some point and how they built themselves, the practices and, their strengths, which is what we're going to talk about later. So sure. it's a, it's an interesting time. It really is. I know it feels so surreal. And like you said, it, it's, a, it's an unbelievably forced slowdown for so many people that now we have to look at things. <laughs> we didn't want to we do before. We uh, do. We have to look and we have to examine and explore and, and um, change. Yeah. Change. Oh God, don't make me. Don't make me. I know, mm -hmm. it's so true. So you said you're in your clinic right now? I'm in my clinic right now. Okay, so everyone, just so you know, Keith is an acupuncturist, doctor of Chinese medicine, I believe, mm -hmm. correct? Okay, or doctor of oriental medicine, is that the more appropriate? Acupuncture in Chinese medicine is, is the degree I have, doctor of acupuncture in Chinese medicine, yeah. Yes. Okay. But you also have these other superpowers that I didn't really know about until relatively recently. <laughs> we keep secrets. <laughs> yes, clearly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because you're teaching a webinar next week to practitioners all about how to stay calm in the chaos. And the yeah, well, you know, you know, it's turning into more than just practitioners. So there's cool. a group out of Vancouver. British Columbia Healthy Seminars. It was uh, founded by Lauren Brown, who's a colleague. And it's probably, if not the biggest kind of online educational um, platform for Chinese medicine practitioners and um, holistic health practitioners, it's, it's close. And so I've taught for them in the past. I've taught some online courses for Chinese medicine practitioners. But when all of this chaos happened, Lauren decided hey, we need to step up and we need to become a community. And we can, with this platform, he gathered a few um, practitioners. Right now there's four 
-hmm. And we get together every Tuesday night. Um, you'll do a connection to the to the um, website because obviously it's six thirty yes. my time on the East Coast, three thirty West Coast. And what we're doing is we're coming together as a community mm -hmm. and talking about how to remain calm during this time of uncertainty. And so the various practitioners last Tuesday night was um, was Randine Lewis, and she talked about raising consciousness during this time, and we did meditations, and she did a lecture, and it was really great. And next week, I'm going to speak on how to harness your inner strength. So during times of crisis, challenge, and change, because... Right now, we know that we're going through a big change. Yes. And is it going to be a crisis, which it is a world crisis, but does it have to be a personal crisis? Or is it just a challenge? And so what happens during times like this is that people's old wounds surface, their insecurities, their old traumas. Some of them they're not even aware of. Sometimes it's childhood traumas, early adult traumas. It can even be... Um, inherited familial trauma that hasn't been processed. And so when we get in a time of uncertainty, we don't have those um, guards anymore. We have to deal with ourselves. And so the trauma starts to surface, and it will take a challenge and become a crisis. And that's what we're going to be talking about next Tuesday night, is how you actually harness your natural strengths and virtues during times like this so that it doesn't have to be a personal crisis. You'll have the, the strength to actually deal with yourself, being pent up by yourself, and the world in general, So, and the crisis. But that's the part of me you didn't know about that I was doing this research, and I know where you were going with that. But. <laughs> Yeah, well, the research on this, I know, and the fact that you were going to potentially write a book about this information because, or this topic, because this information is something that we really need. And especially right now, I mean, because it's helpful, obviously, in the good times, but you really need it in the bad times. And I feel like this, I wanted to, this live, I really just wanted it to be a bit of a preview for what you were going to be teaching about and just some ideas for my own audience to help navigate this, this situation that we find ourselves in. Right. So, you know, how this came about is, as you know, I'm, I've been researching and writing about burnout syndrome. Yeah. And so that's actually where the research comes from. Mm -hmm. And when you delve deeper and deeper and deeper into burnout, you see that there's a personality type that tends to burn out. Is that why? No, dude, it's sparkling water. Are you kidding me? I'm a health coach. What are you drinking? Wine. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the end of the day. Yeah, that's totally. <laughs> what time is it? It's like after 6 there. It's all good. Yeah, 6.10. So anyway, <laughs> I've been doing this research into burnout. And what you find is that people who tend to burn out, um, we have personalities. And it, doesn't, it, it does have to do with external events. But it has to do with when an external event actually triggers a past event. And people who have trauma that have been undealt, that has not been dealt with, it's stored. It's stored in the body, it's stored in the brain, it's stored in the consciousness. And for Chinese medicine practitioners, we can access that through acupuncture. You can access it through specific therapies, you can access it through body work. But you take this trauma and you put it with personality types. So people who tend to burn out are people who are pessimist or labeled as type A that have an over need to control. So. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Okay. That's Girl, nice. you ain't burned out yet. Thank God for Hayden. So, Thank God for Hayden. You just except, well, you know, that, that, you, you need to know your strengths and your weaknesses and your virtues. And in order to, you know, you form alignments. Like, I would never be a successful practitioner without Josh, my yeah. husband. Yeah. Because if you look at my character strengths, which we'll be talking about more on Tuesday, there are 24, 28, I can't remember the exact number, character strengths that everyone has. Some of them come naturally, and some of them you have to work at. And what we find is that in times of, of um, crisis or challenge, 
or just a change. It can just be a small change that will set some people off. Yeah. That if you rely on those strengths, they will get you through. But a lot of people, they they forget their strengths and they go pessimistic, and they um, they go to their trauma, and so they start reacting. And so what we're talking about next Tuesday night is you have to let go of reaction and start acting from the strength that you are. So my strength, my number one character strength happens to be curiosity. Mm -hmm. And the second one is love of learning. And the third one is perspective. So we actually all have one of these strengths. And the top five are usually easy. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to think about them. They just come naturally. Yeah. So when something like this happens, my curiosity triggers in. And I want to know more. And I want to know what I can do. And so what happens is that allows for real control because I start looking at the areas of my life that I can control. And that's what optimists do. So we have a thought style of, um, I don't know if you know the difference between optimist and pessimist, but an optimist. I have a general idea. <laughs> see, yes. they, they know, they, what they do is they see change or, or times like this or what we would call like a bad diagnosis or a crisis, with the, the first thing that they see it as is a challenge. So they're like, okay, now what am I going to do? And that what am I going to do is what can I control? Mm -hmm. And they're also very creative. So an optimist is in a situation such as we're in now, and they're very curious. So I didn't realize when I went into this whole field of study and burnout syndrome and in um, crisis and in um, trauma that curiosity was my top kind of personality trait. Mm -hmm. But I was actually writing an article on curiosity at the time because I've always been a curious person. And the thing about curiosity is it really doesn't matter what happens. We just want to know what's next and how we got here. So it's, there's a space, there's an openness. So I am naturally an optimist, but people can learn to be optimists. Okay. Pessimist. A pessimist is a person who takes things personally, they think it's permanent, and it's pervasive. So something happens negatively, they're triggered by trauma sometimes, and they take it personally. This, I'm, I always, this is about me. I did something wrong. Uh, how can I change? I, and then it goes permanent. I've always done things wrong. I've always messed up. Anytime I try to do something, bad things happen. And then it's permanent. Nothing's ever going to change. Right. And so those two aspects of, of being flare up in terms of challenge and in terms of crisis. So right now, I'm in a challenge mode. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are acting in a crisis mode. Right. Yeah. So you can learn. The more aware you are of your natural, innate gifts and virtues and temperaments, you harness those. I'm so curious what so, everybody is. Well, I, yeah, everyone, who's watching, let us know. I'm dying to know what everyone thinks they are. <laughs> I definitely have well, a okay. pessimist tendencies. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Hayden, on right. the other hand, he's like you, so optimistic. Definitely, this is a challenge. And I'm like, it's, oh my it, God, this is all over. I burned the whole thing down. <laughs> see, it's pervasive. <laughs> I know. Yeah. In your mind. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but, you, but I think you understand that things will change. I do. I definitely do. I feel like I've worked on the pessimist side of myself for a long time. So I, I, I do. I think that there was there were a few days there where I was like, oh, my God, this is a nightmare and blah, 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 the whole story. But then last week I got over myself and and realized that actually this is what I really feel like I need to be doing this. I want to serve my community. I want to show mm -hmm. up in this way, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah, it's, it certainly turned around relatively quickly. Right. Yeah. Indeed. And you know what? They're, that type of person, so what you do is you see that there's something greater, mm -hmm. and you're going to take it into service. And that's 
one of the character strengths of certain people. They like to serve, they like community, they like to bring things together. But you know, it's also natural to be anxious and fearful and sad and grieving and all of those emotions during times like this. But here's what I found that's really helpful. You know, I never really say I'm anxious. I never say I'm sad. I'm happy. I always talk of it as I'm experiencing sadness right now. I'm experiencing grief. I'm experiencing anger. Because, you know, those emotions are not who you are when you're like, I am angry. No, you're more than just angry, or I am depressed, or I am sad, or I'm grieving. You're experiencing those emotions. Right. And so I like to word it that way. And I say, right now, I'm experiencing anger because it allows you to identify it. You actually, you, you honor it because it's appropriate right now. I mean, it's appropriate to be afraid in a time where we don't know what's going to happen next, but you don't have to stay in it. Right. You experience it, and then you say, hey, here's what I can control. There are ways for me to be creative, and I can do something. I can harness these negative emotions and transform them into something positive. You can transform it into service. I have a lot of friends in New York right now who are transforming it into art. I mean, you see all of these live events where our friends are quarantined yeah. and they're putting on concerts yeah. or they're creating. Um, one of my friends, she's uh, doing drawings every day of her life in quarantine. And that's a way to actually move the trauma out of the body because stress and trauma, when not expressed, gets stored in the body. Right. More the, than just the mind, it's actually in the body. So you have to do something physical to transform that stress and trauma. Yeah. And we talked about that the other day. I mean, moving the body is number one. Exercise, movement, yoga, mm -hmm. um, some way to, to actually move the body. You can complete the stress cycle. Creativity yeah. is another. I was watching you live yesterday, and you all were talking about um, partners um, hugging, kissing, and orgasm. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. A, a six-second, a six no, a 12-second hug and a six-second kiss will actually complete a stress cycle and get stress out of the body. Because typically we don't hug strangers or people that we don't feel safe with yes. for 12 seconds. And we don't kiss strangers... <laughs> Well, With six seconds. not all of us. I do. mean, I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other Instagram live. <laughs> right, but it allows the body to feel safe. And right now, our bodies need to feel safe. So we need to do things to care for our bodies. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you're doing it. I'm not doing eating well right now, and I need to. You know, eat well, move, meditate. Deep breaths, laughter, belly laughter is a big one um, to get stress and trauma out of the body. And so, again, the purpose of getting it out is it gets stored if you don't complete a stress cycle. So it means you have to do something. Every day that you experience stress, you need a ritual or an action that engages the physical body to transform that stress because, again, we have stressors that are out here. We have an intellectual way that we deal with it. But when our body is stressed, the body recognizes it. You know, hormones are released. Right. The heart rate increases. Blood pressure increases. The stressor can go away, but the body still responds. So each day you need some type of ritual to say, this, I'm going to complete my stress response. And... Um, and honor that in honor of the body. Yeah. That's, and so it's amazing. Somebody just said, This is great advice. I just joined <laughs> and I'm already learning so much. <laughs> and you know I you know, I tuned in yesterday, right, when you were all were talking about kissing and loving and orgasm. Did you see with the state of New York? Did you see their their um pamphlet on safe sex during all of this? No, I didn't. Oh, you gotta look I it up. Andrew Cuomo's emails nightly, but I did not see anything about that. So tell me. No, oh, it's hysterical. It's hysterical. <laughs> About having safe, safe sex right now. One, the safest partner is yourself. Yeah, well, that, there's that. 
There's that. But number two, I love the way they phrase it. The second safest is someone you live with. <laughs> awesome. Well, they didn't say who. They, they could have clarified. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say who. That's hysterical. Yeah. Well, whatever, whatever works at this point. It, I mean, <laughs> don't create trauma for your kids or your parents. <laughs> Stick stick to your partner that you've already been experiencing totally. relationships with. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's my plan. <laughs> I'm in the house with my sister. I mean, that's definitely not happening. See? See? That's why they need to clarify. They should clarify, definitely. <laughs> so it's all in the details. But anyway, so... Yeah. The, the, the whole reason that I've started delving into to this now, and, and I see this as an important time for people to reflect and learn um, their virtues and their strengths, is because this is a traumatic time for a lot of people. And they're going to carry this trauma for years to come, and we're going to have a traumatized society. And then in my research, they're all going to burn out. Right. And so we're going to have healthcare system that's burnt out. We're going to have therapists, teachers, um, first responders, neighbors that are going to be burnt out. And all of it can be prevented. Right. And so, you know, honor the fact that we're going through trauma and right. crisis, but we do have control over our response to it. Mm -hmm. We may not be able to control anything that's going on outside of us right now, but we can control certain aspects of our lives and that little bit of control when you focus on it um actually cascades down to that whole helplessness syndrome where people just feel helpless about everything if you can find one aspect of your life that you can control yeah um then it makes you feel a lot less helpless in all aspects of your life so I just couldn't agree more. Let's talk about that learned helplessness. I learned I learned about learned helplessness, um, I think through Dr. Sarah Gottfried years ago, and I was really struck by that because I feel like I grew up in a situation where I definitely learned that help learned helplessness, and it was one of those things where it took me years to even t shift that mindset to know that that actually didn't need to be my reality. Right. So it usually for most people happens at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, when we are children, when we're babies and small children, a lot of times we can't do anything but wait. So in stress, when, when a stressor comes to you or when you're in a traumatic situation or you're in a stressful situation, you know, this fight, flight, and freeze. And when we're kids, the only thing that we have is freeze. Right. We cannot fight and we cannot run because we don't have the physical capabilities to it. And so that also happens when we're in our developmental phase through puberty and early, um, early childhood, you know, up until about 18, a lot of people, they don't know mm -hmm. how to fight back. And so any early childhood trauma, even birth trauma, trauma to the mother while you're in the womb, so it depends on when the trauma occurs, it's deeply ingrained, and it changes our brain. So we know that trauma changes our brain, and the earlier we uh, experience trauma, the deeper ingrained it is. And so what happens when we can't do anything about it, you are helpless. And the brain actually creates neural patterns that says, I'm helpless. Right. And so we have a lot of people in our society, especially right now, because people feel helpless. You know, there may be people who never consciously realize that they're helpless before, but right now they say, I cannot, I feel helpless. Like, how are you going to fight this disease that no one really understands? You can't run from it. And right now we can't even run from our own thoughts because everybody is is secluded and with themselves. And so what happens is even unconscious traumas 
that we may be unaware of start bubbling up to the surface and we start feeling helpless. So we don't know, some people don't even know what the trauma is, but they know what helplessness feels like. And so that's how learned helplessness works. You grow up in a situation, you see things, you could, you may be in an abusive situation as a child, you may be the child of an alcoholic, um, you may be neglected, you may have had an early childhood experience with a with a um, a person who who is um, bullies you, mm -hmm. and and there's nothing you can do about it, and that sets up the brain to know that you're helpless, and you start repeating those behaviors. So that's kind of what learned helplessness is. You can also learn to be an optimistic, and so you can act, you can transform those things. And the way, again, that you learn to be optimistic and transform helplessness is to look, one, identify the trauma yeah. and work on that. Two is to look at what you control that you do have. Again, right now, um, you know, you have control over what information you choose to listen to. You, most of us have control over the food that we eat at this point. Yeah. Um, you have control over when you wake, when you go to sleep. Um, and control and over then what you, you watch, have, what you, what's that? you have a, a control over what you watch as well, like what you, yeah, you have, you have control over what you watch. Yeah. What you're exposed to. Exactly. Yeah. And right now I'm exposed to that damn lion king of whatever. Have you seen that? <laughs> what lion king? <laughs> what? It ain't Disney, honey. There's this Netflix show about these people who breed what? large cats. Oh, yeah, and, somebody else mentioned this to me today. Oh, actually. my God. Yeah. You know what? You watch that and you realize your life is actually pretty good. So you get perspective. <laughs> yes. Perspective has helped me tremendously <laughs> in my life. Yeah. Agreed. And perspective is actually one of the character strengths. Some people get perspective easily. Some people get perspective. I mean, my the on the list of character strengths at the very bottom of my list, yeah. and you'll appreciate this, is self-regulation. Mm. I have to work at that. Yeah. But what that means is now that I'm being told what to do, mm -hmm. I'm fine with it because I can't make those decisions. Like if you tell me I can't go out of the house from 8 till noon or whatever, or you tell me, I'm fine. I like restrictions because then, because I'm not good at doing it myself. I mean, if I have complete freedom, I'll be out doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Don't I know it? You know it. But here's the thing. There's also people who, who are big on justice and fairness. Mm -hmm. They're having a tough time right now. Like if your character strength is fairness, you're looking at everything that's unfair. Right. And you're looking at the injustice of what's going on in the world. And it's really triggering you. Yeah. Oh, um, no yeah, no doubt. I see that a lot. I've, I've seen it from a bunch of people who I know in the wellness world. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, um, you know, just our rights, generally speaking, mm -hmm. we are allowed to do and what we should have the right to do and things of that nature. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And because of my personality, it's like I really feel like you can't take away my freedom because when you give me constrictions, I'm going to work in those restrictions and constrictions and, you know, I'm going to be creative. I'm like, I will stay in your box, but I'm going to have fun doing it. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes that's naive, but, you know, optimists are not necessarily realists. Right. I know. I live with one, for sure. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. So, okay. This is super helpful. I don't want to take too much of your time because I realize it's already 6.30 for you. Um, I want to, I want everyone to join your webinar next week because I feel like you're about to go even deeper than this on that webinar, aren't you? I have to We're going to go deeper. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. I have a bit.ly link, but I didn't copy it on my phone <laughs> before we jumped on this, which is super annoying. So I'm going to share it in my stories afterwards. But um, people can go to, what's the website's name? 
It's healthy seminars. Or seminars, right? Isn't healthy dot seminars. Com dot backslash calm. Oh, calm. Easy. Okay. Healthy mm -hmm. seminars.com people forward slash calm. Oh, it's a forward slash. See, forward I don't even know. This. I know you're so technologically savvy. I can't even handle you right now, Keith. <laughs> backslash. Anyway, what, uh, what the hell's a backslash? Oh, I know what a backsplash is. What's a black? Okay, so it's a forward. Yeah, there, it's on well, the keyboard. The... I see it on okay. the keyboard. Yeah, there's a forward and a What back. the hell does it do? What? I said, what does it do? I haven't got a clue. I don't know. Okay, I'm sure it's, so it's for something. So it's healthy seminars dot com forward slash calm okay calm yeah people so sign up for this webinar that keith is hosting because he's going to be delving into all of this stuff uh in a much deeper level than we're able to on instagram live but this was so great i really loved all that you shared it's it's super helpful and it really I, for me as a person who tends to work off my my phone anyway <laughs> Um, as someone who tends towards that pessimistic or tends towards going down that pessimistic path, I, I really, it's a good jolt back to reality for me to start to like, it's like the rubber band snap almost just to help me move more towards the optimist path. Oh, well, look, congratulations on your book. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's out or coming yeah. out real soon. I know. And you know, I love the hell out of you right back at you I know same and I really hope that um you know people will join this webinar or your webinar because I think that by the way people it's free completely free no strings attached it's it is completely free doing something out of the goodwill of his heart his optimistic heart <laughs> and healthy seminars and Lauren it was their idea it was yeah true I know it's I feel like that's the whole thing for me this whole week and even going into the next couple of weeks like how can I serve my audience in some way so that they feel as though you know, there are people stepping in to help and to show up so that you know it's not like oh we're all just spending for ourselves I feel like this brings this brings community together and it shows people that there are a lot of us who really care and want to help in any way that we can that's all we can do right now to make this world a more positive place. I know, seriously, no joke. All right, well, thank you again, Keith. Thank you. I will, I will talk to you soon for sure. Bye. Now, bye. Okay, everyone. Thank you guys for showing up. Um, I will see you. I'm doing a Q&A, actually, in about two and a half hours on on zoom if you go to the the post on my feed right now you will see you'll be able to click or just click on the link in bio and click on that image and you'll be able to sign up if you want to join i'm just doing it for my community it'll be an hour long we'll be i'm taking a lot of different questions from people who've emailed me <laughs> with a lot of questions and we'll be talking about resources and ways that you can deal with your periods and your fertility and all things hormone related all that good stuff so Anyway, I will see you guys later or um, tomorrow on my next Instagram live. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.